Good afternoon, everyone. Very happy to see so many names. Uh, and all your pluses tell us that the connection is good. We can hear and see as well. And that is very important for webinar. Uh, one more thing about the rules of the webinar with me. Uh, usually, uh, I have English webinars, so I speak English. I think that for all teachers of English, it is a good practice. It is good practice for me speaking. It is good practice for you listening. Of course, we can interact. Uh, we can interact through the chat. Uh, you can put plus minuses every time when I ask a question, and I hope that you will. Uh, the second thing that you can do, you can ask any of your questions or disagreement uh, in the chat because uh, it is very important. Okay, so I'll try to speak louder. Is it okay now? <laughs> Uh, so, and uh, one more thing that is important to remember, whenever you have a question, you can use any language that is, um, that, that is comfortable for you, because typing is not an easy thing. That's why if you get used to typing Ukrainian, Russian, English, so please use whatever language you want. I will understand all your questions, and I will be happy to answer them. So today we speak about um yes like this today we're going to speak about uh, good education and we have like maximum 45 minutes so it is like nothing <laughs> when we speak about uh, good education we can speak uh, forever uh, but it is a good thing that we are limited in time. It means that we will focus our attention to the most important things. And I have chosen them already from my practice, from my experience, from my results that I got with my students and with other teachers. And I'm going to represent it a little bit. So uh, as you see on the screen, to my mind, every time when you want to start to have a good education in English, uh, as a teacher, you should start with the curriculum. Uh, somehow, in our, um, in our education system, um, teachers are very skeptical, let it be this word, about curriculum, national curriculum. Uh, and it is like a tradition that is passing on to generations. And I would like to say, unfortunately, it is true. Because uh, when I started working as a teacher trainer in 2002, I remember myself looking at them for the first time. And uh, at that time, as you remember, they changed the curriculum to a new one. Then in 2012, we had a new curriculum uh, with the first uh, form with English. And everybody was, was so alarmed and not happy, especially, I don't know, I'm talking about Kharkiv region. Uh, but I think that all these emotions uh, will go away whenever you open it and read it. I like national curriculum, and it is uh, because I have a reason, okay? So and today I'm going to talk about it a little bit and to show how it helps knowledge of curriculum in effective teaching, in, in, in making a good education for our students and children. You remember that uh, whenever you have a question, please type it, okay? So I'll try to catch it. That's why I'm looking down from time to time. And uh, I'll try to answer all your questions or comments or your disagreement. So it is something that I really, really appreciate when somebody disagrees with me and actually shares it because it is important information. When we have difference of opinion, we can find something that is uh, the most important for both of us, or for all of us here in this, during these 45 minutes. Okay, so I hope that you're ready for productive work. Okay, so let's go to the next uh, stage. How do I know how to teach children? <laughs> um, I can talk about my um, positions and whatever, but I think that words are nothing, deeds are everything. So that's why on the screen right now, you can see the uh, journals that I'm uh, working with. This is my monthly responsibility to publish them, to check the materials, to, um, uh, to choose the authors, to understand the concept, and to provide the, the best materials for the teachers. 
my first journal is English in primary school. It is already more than 10 years. So I'm actually very surprised that the time flies so fast, but it is true. Uh, and we have studied it in uh, Asnova when uh, there was a big question, what to do with youngsters? Oh my gosh, they don't understand the rules of grammar. They cannot read. What can I do with them? Uh, so uh, the idea of these journals is still like that. So what to do with youngsters? And it is my priority. So uh, I work with youngsters every time. I don't remember a year when I didn't work with uh, young learners six, seven, nine, eight, ten years old. They are all my students. I have good experience working in kindergarten. And that's why I know how it works. I know that it is not easy. I know that it is very challenging. I know that it is time consuming. And there are lots of things that we'd like to make the process faster. Like, come on, <laughs> let's learn it by heart or something like that. But from the other side, I, from the other hand, I know that if you go slow, carefully, respectfully, and um, I don't know, thoughtfully, so your youngsters will be so fast uh, uh, later. So that's why that is my one of my projects that I do every month. So it is like my uh, oldest <laughs> baby, right? So the second one is a new one. It is the product that happened two years ago. Oh, thank you very much for loving English. <laughs> so I love your English as well. Um, and uh, um, another journal that you can see on the screen that is a new idea. And uh, every time when we have a new project, you have some feelings to it. And I think that, oh my gosh, how it challenges me personally, because uh, my idea was uh, to provide all necessary information and materials for teachers who work one-to-one, -one, right? So yeah, the time is like that, the economy is not good. Teachers of English, usually they have private lessons. So if you have them, so you can use the materials from that journal and you can contact me to find even the better ones and uh, communicate how to make the journal better. Because whatever I do, I don't do it for myself only because I'm also using these materials. I'm um, doing it for all the teachers who subscribe. So and you can see the information how to subscribe. What else do I do? Uh, I do, I make books. <laughs> Actually, I write books. Uh, my first book uh, about the school, like for teacher to use every day in the lessons, it was the book for uh, the first grade. Uh, it is called the Siu Roki Persi class, and um, it was my all my experience. So if you'd like to to read how I work every lesson, so you can open it and read the lesson, and you understand my style and my um, experience how I work with students. So then it was for the second grade, and it was the most challenging book ever in my practice because I tried to help teachers to work with the course book written by Alan Eswit, and it was difficult for me to, to put it in, in, in an interesting way. So if you have a challenge working with in the second grade with Alan Eswit, so please check the book and enjoy it. And this year, I got a splendid opportunity to write my own course book that was <laughs> very responsible and very <laughs> scary, <laughs> I would tell you the truth. Uh, but it worked out. I, I, I like it, but it is not me who should talk about it. So you can see that all the components are there. So you can, again, check it out and everything. But it is something that I have already ha had. So I have already done in teaching. You cannot see my lessons. You cannot see my students right now. At least this uh, part of my job is absolutely public, and you can check it. You can find the books online. You can find it on our um, uh, site. So you can find it in the bookstore. So like, I don't think that the books are it is something that we sell. So you should find it easily. <laughs> uh, so it's challenging, but very interesting. So uh, today, from all this experience, I'm going to share with, with you with something. And that's why, uh, to my mind, <clears throat> when we speak about the uh, good education, right? The education that um, gives our students 
opportunity to like English, to use it, to improve it, to enjoy it. Because without all these things, you, you don't care for English, right? But if you have um, at least something from this job, uh, from these verbs, so then you will enjoy it a lot. I have a question to you. You can see one, two, three points on the screen. And the question is going to be like that. You're a teacher, and right now it is summer, so you have time to relax, I hope, <laughs> and to plan your next year. Because we should do it, right? We should picture what am I going to do next year. Even if you have many years after you, so like you have done lots of things before, still we have to relax a little bit and to ask myself a question. What can I change next year? How can I plan my next year better? So, uh, this is the question to you. What do you start with when you plan the next year, for example? So, uh, you know that you should have some aims. Uh, it is a question from Alena Kravchenko about the book. Of course, it is available. It is very easy to find on our site, asnova.com.ua. So you will see the site at the end of the presentation. I don't think that it is challenging to find the book. Um, so when I know that I have one year ahead, I know what students I'm going to teach. For example, primary school, because that is something that I'd like to speak today. And maybe you already know that it will be the fourth grade. Let's go very specific. Uh, so you have to put yourself some aims and to understand what to teach. Where will you take the information? One, in a course book, two, in a calendar plan, three, in national curriculum. So where are you personally looking for information for you to plan? Okay, Olena, Oksana, I'm sorry, Oksana, thank you. Mm -hmm. Andrei Alexandrovich, Maimo, Vitpovit. <laughs> Okay, so we have three and four. Oh, good. Okay, we have difference of opinion. It is very interesting. Somebody thinks one, somebody thinks three. Mm -hmm. To reach the goals, I serve the net. Okay, yes, uh, the question was not about how to reach the goals, but the question was how to set the goals, how to understand what should I teach next year. Okay, two, one, three. So actually, you can choose whatever, right? According to my experience, if you'd like to have good education, if you'd like to be safe the whole school year, if you work in school, first, you should start with national curriculum. National curriculum, that is the document that not only punishes you with the uh, job to be done, but it is also protects you from any other administration that tells you that you should cover every page in the course book. If it happens in your school, uh, if it happens in your school, sometimes I heard some stories when administrator comes or parents come and say, why did you skip a unit? Why did you skip the page in there? Why did you skip some exercises? And sometimes we do it intuitively we think that it is too difficult but we don't know why exactly that's why my recommendation is you open up national curriculum you read it carefully and then you are ready to answer all the questions if somebody is asking you why you are skipping something or why uh, not every i don't know something is covered you open the national curriculum and you say okay let's find it here because that is the most important document uh, to follow. And it is up to the teacher to decide. Thank you, Lydia. So you will see what can you decide in the national curriculum and what to skip. That's right. <laughs> so, but because calendar plan can be written for and by different things, people and things, right? So you never know. A course books, we have experience in the very difficult course books and we think that the program is that difficult, but it is not true. So that's why you take the curriculum, you read it with a cup of coffee, relaxed and without any emotions. Just read it out. Just read it. It is, it is not long. You will see it right now. So then 
and you compare the course book that is provided to you and you see, okay, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to skip that because first of all, I'm very time limited, right? It is something that every teacher feels every 45 minutes. When 45 minutes are over, like, <gasps> ah, not enough time. So that's why for us to have at least some time <laughs> to uh, be uh, sure and uh, provide whatever we should, first read the national curriculum, then compare the book that is provided to you, the calendar plan, and make up as your own decision. It is something that you can make a decision about. So right now we will see what are we going to make a decision right now. Uh, here, I'm not going to read you anything, but do you recognize the pages? What are these? Do you know? Is it scary? <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for the first answer. Thank you, Oksana. Of course, that is the curriculum. And by the way, pay attention that it is only four little pages. Okay? It is not a big book. That is the curriculum for the fourth grade. And it is very short. It is very brief. And uh, I know that you cannot see it and you cannot read it, but the most important part of it to remember that the first page of the curriculum is all about what should be taught and the second page of the curriculum, what they should be able to do. That is very important. Uh, so there is amount of words they should read, amount of uh, sentences they should be able to write, and so on and so forth. That is, it is very simple. If you read it, believe me, you will enjoy it. Our, you have, especially when you have eight units and only two lessons a week, wow. <laughs> okay, so uh, that is, that is why, that is why you open the national curriculum, you see the most important things and you skip those that you have no opportunity to cover because it is only up to you, believe me. So, um, I read this curriculum a lot of times <laughs> and uh, right now on the screen you can see uh, the um, topics, grammar topics, grammar structures, let it be, and vocabulary that should be presented and learned in the fourth grade. It is right now, according to the curriculum uh, 2012, that is the last year of primary school, right? After the fourth grade, we have all these, um, let's call them tests, that finish, finish our primary school, right? So, according to national curriculum that you saw a minute ago, um, we should present and teach these grammar structures and our students should be able to uh, recognize and use vocabulary on these topics. Tell me, please, um, is there any limits in curriculum? Okay, I have a question. I will read it first. Has the topics in the national curriculum to be in the same that in my calendar plan. Um, you mean the order has the topics in the national curriculum to be in the same order, right? Order than in my calendar plan. No. The order of topics, it, it, it's like, uh, has nothing to do with your teaching, okay? Just the list, like this is, I, I made the list and you can start with school life and not with my family. It is according to you what is more logical. Um, I have four pupils in one lesson a week. Perfect. Four pupils. That's perfect. One lesson a week is still possible. Slower than others, but still possible. But it is another topic how to cover everything in, in this time with this um, number of students. So let's focus on the question that I'm going to ask right now. Okay. Um, the question is, Tell me, please. So you read all the grammar structures, so it is not a long list. So the question is, what, from your memory, okay? There are no judgment, there are no mistakes, just from your memory. What do you think? What grammar are new in the fourth grade? So it means that they were not presented in the third grade. They are new for the students uh, in the fourth grade. So just look through them and type maybe the beginnings of their names if they're too long. <laughs> Present perfect, right? Everybody knows that, right? So it's just like the hot news. Oh, present perfect in the fourth grade. Yes, you're right, Elena, that's right. Going to, mm -hmm, maybe, 
Mm -hmm. So anything else new that was not in the third grade, but in the fourth, we have to teach it. So look at through more attentively. Maybe we'll find something else. Yes, present perfect. You're right. I have no arguments to that. Present perfect. <laughs> Good. So present perfect is our favorite. <laughs> Transport. Okay, yes, you, you can look at the same time. Should, but there is no should in my list. I don't know. Yes, should is not in the program. You're right. And even it is not in the curriculum in the fourth grade, by the way. Uh, transport. Question words. Really? Uh, you think that question words were not in the third grade? Okay, maybe. Mm -hmm. Present perfect. Degrees of comparison. Mm -hmm. Degrees, right. Okay. Present verb. If you make a mistake, it's okay. We can understand. Uh huh. Maybe maybe uh, this continues, right? Present continues. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. So these are your ideas. You can see them in the chat. Uh, most of you have the same ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, and now let's look at the vocabulary and choose what topics are not in the like. What topics are going to be new in the fourth grade? They were not presented in uh, the third grade. I have the, an the answer, nature. Nature. Okay, maybe. Yes, it was in uh, the fourth grade. It is all about uh, environment, something like that, right? Polluting and everything. Shopping, transport, nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it possible? And in grammar, especially tenses, as a rule, it is a mixture of tenses and people mind. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to answer very shortly. It's possible. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, of course, as a teacher, I should explain how, <laughs> but I'm looking at the time and I understand that it will be the topic of our next seminar. Okay. Traveling, maybe. Furniture. Okay. So now I will show you, uh, so before uh, this webinar, of course, your young shouldn't be overloaded with tasks. They should feel enjoyed while studying. That is true. But you know, as a teacher of primary school, you should find that thin line between lazy lessons and too overloaded lessons. Because if your lessons are very relaxed, believe me, it is so challenging then to teach them work effectively, to be busy with the task, to do tasks in a short time. Because if you are relaxed in lesson of English, if somebody is reading a text and you at this time dreaming or sleeping or I don't know, drawing a beautiful picture, it means the effectiveness of the lesson is very low and dynamic is very boring. So it is it should be the um, thin line between so it should be dynamic. Okay, so of course it, it is very easy to say, very difficult to do, but it is something that you should keep in mind. Whenever your youngsters have a three minute, they will destroy your uh, discipline, they will be hard to manage, there will be noise, uh, some unproductive activity. So that's why it is very important for you to give them the optimal position, like not to be lazy, to enjoy, but not to be overloaded with like, oh my gosh, I cannot do it. So, again, very philosophical, very difficult question, but absolutely possible to solve. It is not like in the fairy tales they only can do. No, you can do it on your lesson. The only thing is that you should have a name like this. I'd like my students to work productively, and I don't want to be uh, them overloaded. So, I'm trying to focus on one topic. Thank you very much for your questions. That is perfect that we have this kind of interaction, even when I don't see your eyes, but I see your interaction in the chat. But we have to move on. And the next thing that you will see on the screen, that will be the answer to my question. What topics are uh, not in the third grade and they are new for the fourth grade, right? So that is, I'm trying to read and speak at the same time. Okay, so that is the answer. Do we see it? Yes, you see they are bold, right? So those who answered going to degrees of comparison, question words and present perfect were absolutely right. Only these four topics are absolutely new for our students. It means that the most of the topics have, have been presented before. They are familiar with that. They had some practice. 
maybe not very successful, but they have the whole year to do it again. And that is perfect. That is why I like national curriculum. It gives you an opportunity to revise over and over and over again. And that makes my students feel comfortable. Because if they didn't understood, they didn't, they didn't understand, or they, they forgot something, and they forget, that is true, that we cannot put aside or avoid. They forget that the summer holidays, they forget. They are so beautiful angels with nothing to remember. That is the truth, and we shouldn't be frustrated about that. We should understand that that is a fact. Youngsters forget the information if they don't use it actively. And that is right, psychologically, for our brain, for our health, that is the right way to do with the information. So, if I have only four new topics to present, so I don't feel nervous, I don't feel panicking or something. But there is one thing that I'd like to ask you. I think that you uh, noticed that present perfect is a gray one. Everything is black. Why perfect is gray? Don't I like it? Why? So, do you have any, any, any reasons? Can you guess my reasons? I did it on purpose. Thank you very much for wonderful words. <laughs> but I need you to work too. So, why do you think? Uh, yes, as a rule, the pupils remember the material of the previous topics. They, they remember if you revise it in a nice way. Mm -hmm. But tell me, please, why present perfect is great? Why did I... Mark it like this. I had a reason. Can you guess my reason? So I'm waiting for three more answers and then I will give you my answer. What can it be? So like, uh-huh, so uh, Olena thinks that maybe we don't have it in present per in, in this fourth grade, the present perfect. Yes, you're right. It, it moved from the middle school to the primary one. That is a fact. Thank you, Oksana. Good. Okay, and the last it's difficult, thank you. <laughs> okay, the, um, yes, it's difficult, I agree, especially for students of four, uh, 10, 11 years old. They don't have um, that kind of uh, way of thinking, right? They don't think abstract, think only about things that they can touch, hear, smell, eat, and everything, right? They are still young youngsters. That is a very important thing. To remember yes and in ukrainian language there is no um equivalent to this uh, topic to this tense yes you're right so but my reason was very simple uh, if you were attentive at the end of the school year or maybe at the beginning no i think at the end i think it happened in may our minister of education decided to simplify the program the curriculum on the fourth grade and present perfect was successfully removed okay so no panic we don't we you don't have to teach present perfect in primary school because it is difficult because uh they are not ready for and it just they don't need it yet right they have fifth sixth seventh and so on and so on great to understand it to practice it to see it yes <laughs> i'm very happy that you're happy so but if you follow the Ministry of Education news very attentively, you will find the information that um, Present Perfect was, uh, it, it is recommended to avoid it. So, next year, please, even if in your course book there will be some exercises about Present Perfect, don't panic, just skip it if you think that your students are not ready. If you see that your students can try it and the activity is friendly enough, you can experiment, you can see what will happen, but please don't spend a lot of time on present perfect. It is not the only thing they should teach, they should learn. They should learn all the rest of the list. And by the way, not only learn, they should use it. The same uh, information you can see in the column vocabulary, only three topics are new if you compare the third grade and the fourth. Nature was also there. But maybe the amount of, uh, I don't know, some like environment is a little bit um, new or something like that. But actually shopping is new places of living and transport. It is something that is, uh, that uh, makes the third uh, curriculum different from the fourth one. 
So that is why I like the curriculum. It is quite step by step. It doesn't have gaps. So present continuous, you cannot teach one year. It's not enough. You have to have a lot of practice to be fluent in it, to understand how it works. And it, uh, it is about every, um, every tense, every structure that you can see on the screen. You cannot teach it in eight lessons. So it is nonsense. Yes, you will practice it. They will get some uh, confidence with it. Then eight lessons without the structure, they forgot the previous one. Because that is the nature of our brain. We forget, but maybe not forget, but uh, we put somewhere far in our minds the information that we are not using actively. That is why one of the most important thing is actually to use language when you teach it and when you learn it. Okay? So how to teach? Okay, so we go next. If you have some questions about this, are there any other topics to skip like present perfect? <laughs> mm, I would not recommend that. <laughs> I think that all these topics are quite important. And uh, when you have the um, end of the primary school, your youngsters should be able to use all of this. They are not difficult. And Okay, I think no. I, I really recommend no. Because if you put aside again present continuous and you put aside, I don't know, some question words, it, I don't know, it will be not completed. It will be very limited. Like uh, you cannot use present continuous without question words, for example. You cannot use, uh, I don't know, preposition, prepositions without question words. So how can you teach one without another? So there are lots of so-called special cases of using even present simple, so it is taught to all the... That's right. Thank you, Lydia. That, that's right. And by the way, that is very important for you as a teacher to remember. Uh, in national curriculum, there is no information for you as a teacher that if you have present simple, it means that you should teach all 115 uh, cases of usage of it. No. It means that you should teach your students to use it right here, right now, for their life experience. Because they don't travel, they don't buy tickets, they are too young for that. They don't know how the procedure works, that's why they don't need those special cases of using different um, tenses for different uh, you know, cases in life. The same with present continuous. As a teacher, you remember that there was a phrase, it's up to the teacher. That is, it's up to you to decide what functions of present continuous you're going to present. And if you think that some functions are too difficult to understand, please omit them. They can still use to describe uh, uh, actions right now, right here, without knowing that it can be about the future or whatever. So again, it is up to you to limit the information that is given in national curriculum up to your conditions up to the knowledge and level of your students uh, because in some course book you can find i don't know 40 names of animals i don't know the author think that is the most important thing to know 40 names of animals i don't agree I think the most important thing in the topic animals is to be able to describe them is to be able to compare them and for that purpose i need 10 animals maximum but it means that my students will be able to use this information in the game, in description, in retelling, in, in, in the dialogue or something like that. And not to waste my time just learning by heart 40 animals that actually are not so important. Okay? So that's why everything should be logical. Everything should be uh, up to your students, so up to you. For your students to enjoy the process. Don't overload them because it is actually up to you, not to the national curriculum. It is not written the number of words, the uh, number of structures, like, I don't know, um, the usage, uh, something like that. Okay, so that is the idea. Please um, let the authors hear. <laughs> you know, uh, we have changes this year. Right now, you as a teacher, choose the author. That's why my uh, re like recommendation will be likewise. Please read the author and choose that one that cares about your students, 
course, course book is the best for you, not for somebody because you are working in the classroom. Let's move on. Okay, thank you very much for your questions. And uh, right now on the screen you will see, um, I think we are to build up to so-called active and passive vocabulary. About passive and active vocabulary, again, it is the separate webinar about that. But what is important to remember, um, every time, uh, so the connection between active and passive vocabulary is very, very close. Uh, let's imagine that you have 100% one, of vocabulary passive and active together. It means that 80% are going to be in passive vocabulary and 20% are going to be in active vocabulary. So if you have 10 words, you remember 10 words in English, it means that only two of them you can pronounce and say because they are active. And eight of them are very passive and it takes a lot of time for you to find the right one and even to remember it. So that's why we have to enlarge vocabulary. But if we uh, put it as the meaningless words like abracadabra in their heads, it is not even passive vocabulary. I remember myself, I was a student of university. Of course, I was a student in foreign department. And I remember my teachers who asked me to learn 64 words during one hour. I learned it. Did it help me? I don't think so. It was just abracadabra because I didn't use it. So that's why, um, okay. So that's why we have to find the best way to understand that uh, our students can learn. Even when there are 30 students in your classroom, it is still possible to learn slower. I agree. Maybe not that big amount, but remember, it is up to you to decide how many. Unfortunately, I look at the time and I'm a little bit scared, so let's move on. I'm going to speak about effective teaching that I'm using in my everyday practice and I used it in my course book. Uh, I'm going to do it very fast, that's why please follow and then I will give, a, give you a question. Thank you, Hanna, for the answers, but I didn't ask a question yet. <laughs> okay, so I start, whenever I go to the classroom, I start with appreciating all experience of my students. I ask them what they know, even if it is something like going to. I like to ask them something to appreciate their knowledge. So then they remember, I give them time to remember it, to look back, to refresh their memories on some topic that is very close to the new one or the new one. For example, transport. They know bus, they know car, even if it is the new vocabulary. So then when I appreciated their knowledge on the topic, I make a presentation of a new one. So it means that I connect their old experience with something new. And according to our na natural uh, laws, right? Laws that are inside of every human being. We are sometimes are not very happy with new experience, right? Because it scares us. It is something new. Maybe I'm not going to be good in, in it. That's why presentation should be followed by a good, interesting, enjoyable experiment. Let's, but we are trying it out. We are looking how is it useful for me? Should I really know that? After experiment, we know from physics we are going to have a result. Result can be different. <laughs> but let's hope that, that the result is effective and quite um, positive. It means in the scheme that I drew for you, it means that my students at the end of my circle will get a new experience. Now, I have, no, we have no chance to choose the author because we have already got nested for one, three, six. Yes, unfortunately. But again, uh, you can use uh, my methodological recommendations how to work with the second grade. And still, you can find a way how to work. If it is difficult, contact me. We will try to find an opportunity to make it easier. But it is better to find a solution than to live in a problem. OK, so let's go back. I have a question. So you can see all the experience, reflection, presentation and result in a new experiment uh, on the screen. And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six as the thoughts of my students. Every time when we have this stage all experience, what my students think. And the reflection, what my students think. Uh, so right now, 
I'm not asking you to write anything, but you have no time. Just look it through very carefully and now you will see the answers, okay? The answers, okay? Of course, old experience, my students say, oh, I know, right? Reflection, hmm, I remember when I present, uh, they like, oh, I listen, <laughs> right? So then when we try it out, yes, let's try it, okay? So if I create positive atmosphere, they will say, let's try it, whatever you tell me. So if the uh, result is positive, you remember this if is very important. So then, oh, I understand, right? You remember when you're sitting in a very difficult lesson, and, oh, I understand, that is very wonderful feeling. And if you understand and like the results, so then it will go to your experience. So it, will be, it means that I know now. So that is the scheme that I used in my course book. Uh, let's see. The first unit, if we go about grammar, okay, so very briefly about the grammar in my course book. We started, uh, uh, the course book starts with very simple, present simple. Let's refresh whatever you remember. Of course, they don't remember, so let's refresh it. Don't be embarrassed about not knowing something. Let's refresh it, learn it again, use it, use it, use it, use it. The second unit, every unit is only five lessons, so it, it is quite short quite effective to remember to practice uh, to present practice and review and remember so the next uh, unit number two is all about animals animals and we speak about present simple plus present continuous because they are different and only with comparison both of them you have to um, how to say compare them and you remember the difference uh -huh, somebody agrees with Allah? No, yeah, okay, so yeah, <laughs> it is a tough situation. Mm -hmm. In the fourth grade you can choose, right? The idea was when I told you that you can choose the author, I meant that in the fourth and seventh grade you can choose, you could choose, okay? You have done it already. Then we go to the third uh, unit, for example, in my book. Now we have present continuous to revise a little bit, like see what, how to use it, to refresh it. And we present past simple, just to show again how, what is the difference between them. In the fourth unit, we go back to present simple because we have to remember it again. You remember every time we recycle, recycle, reviewing. And we present degrees of comparison because it is something that we can see. Usually we compare things right here, right now. I have to finish. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so just a few words about present perfect. I think on the next slide you will see present perfect things. Uh, it was a challenge for me to use it, but when I wrote the, um, the we must use only those books which we have in our school library. Dear teachers, you can use this year, you can choose whatever literature you think is good for you and for your students. Yes, your students should have a book that has got ministry approval sign, right? Grief. But you as a teacher can use whatever you want. So as the methodological, uh, I don't know, book or some additional supplement, you can use up to your choice. Uh, I see we have lots of problems in education, but let's finish with, I, I will even skip it, okay, because it will take a lot of time. If you're interested how I present per present perfect with youngsters, just contact me, okay? So, effective teaching in my way. So, first, I learn the curriculum. I look it through, I uh, see what, am I, what aims and what vocabulary, what grammar I should teach. Then, Every time when I come to my classroom, I appreciate students' knowledge. Whatever they know, that's good. I like it. So I never tell them that whatever you learned before, forget. Okay, never. <laughs> that is not very positive. So then we review a lot of times whatever we learned before. I never expect my students to remember. And if they remember, oh, I'm so happy. So it is a better way. It means that I'm positive with their results. And the idea in the course book that I use and I use in my classroom every time, I combine something learned with the new to be learned. So to put them together. But our parents haven't an opportunity to buy those books that they like. Unfortunately, that is true. Uh, this, uh, this, I, I cannot, uh, how do you say, I cannot solve this problem. But I believe, to, 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 from my experience, I can work with every course book. Yes, some course books are very challenging to deal with, 
but every course book can give you some material to work with. If you keep in mind that you should combine something they know with something new, when you appreciate their knowledge, it will be possible, it, 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 it will work, okay? So, uh, so that is my way of effective teaching. You see happy kids. You need more information, please join us on our uh, webinars. We have more webinars in summer, in winter, so keep in touch with us. Ten years ago, three pupils in the class didn't read books. Nowadays, three pupils in the class do. Why? I believe it's a positive result, right? <laughs> Very <laughs> difficult to comprehend, but I hope it's a good one. <laughs> okay. So, um, you need more, please contact, please keep in touch, please uh, let us know. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope we have one minute for more questions, okay? So if you have more questions, you can ask still. I, have, I can use the minute to answer your questions. Of course, I'm very grateful for your attention. And you can see some important information on this slide. Mongov UA, that is Minister of Education, please be a regular checker of this site. The information there is very quick to change and very important for your everyday practice. When you read that site, uh, has an hour of your teaching passed? Is it really? <laughs> I haven't felt. Thank you very much, but it is true. Uh, so the last one, that is my email, and I'm very friendly in this way, okay? So you can um, email me any questions, materials for the journals, I don't know, what, whatever. Please contact me, I will be very happy to help you more. Asnova.com UA, books, webinars, whatever you need. Please be with us. Thank you very much for your attention.